Hello, welcome to another video. This is an optimization problem, one of the many applications of differentiation. And in this case, we just want to talk about the maximum distance between two lines or two curves or two functions. So this one says, what is the maximum vertical distance between the line y equals x plus 42 and the parabola y equals x squared minus, sorry, equals x squared. And we're given an interval here. Okay, so we were saying, um, we want to see how far this line or this function, when you graph it, is from another function, but we want to look at the vertical line. And this question is interesting because it is not saying what is the distance between them. It's saying what is the vertical distance. So when you measure the distance between the two lines or curves, it has to be a vertical line. Okay. Because otherwise, it's, it's possible. So let's just have a picture of what this graph looks like. And then we could see what this could mean. So look at this. The first one is y equals x plus 2, which means it's a straight line. Um, let's say something that looks like this, a straight line. Well, it has a positive slope and the y-intercept is positive. So the y-intercept has to be somewhere here. So let me say this is the point where it's 42, okay? And because it's a positive slope, so I can say something like this, okay? Now, the other graph is the graph of y equals x squared. And the graph of y equals x squared is just the parabolic, uh, the graph of the parabola, something like this. So you can see that um, the distance between this function and this curve can be measured from anywhere. You can measure from here to here. That will be a horizontal line. But we're referring to the vertical distance. So it has to be that it's as if you get a mirror and then you place a, um, a ruler rather and then you place a ruler here and you just draw vertical lines. So this is a good candidate. The length of this line will be the distance between the two, but we're looking for where the distance is the greatest. Now it's possible that if you see if this thing goes up like this, then this distance would be a huge distance. But the question has said, no, 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 no. Don't go all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You want to stay between negative 6 and 7. So we want to stay between negative 6 and 7. So somewhere around here, well, we don't know. It's possible for you to find out where it is. Maybe I should just tell you. Okay. The point where these two graphs meet, those are actually the points negative 6 and 7. So we're saying that this point will be negative 6. And this point here will be at 7. So with from here to here, where is the distance, the maximum? Just by looking. Because if you solve this, remember, two functions are equal. Um, if two functions are equal, you just have to say this is equal to this. And you notice that if you say this equals this, you're going to have x squared equals x plus 42, which says x squared minus x minus 42 equals zero. If you solve this quadratic equation, you're going to end up with x um, equals negative six or seven. That's why we're, so these two points actually, so what's the distance between the two functions at this point? Well, it's zero. What's the distance between the two functions at this point? It's zero. But let's assume you didn't know that or you didn't bother yourself, you know, with whether the distance here is zero. We just want to find where it is maximum. Okay, I think the maximum point should be somewhere here, somewhere here. I'm not sure, okay, but we will investigate as long as we know where the point is, okay. So, what do we need to do to find the maximum distance? Remember that, like, not maximum distance, maximum vertical distance. If it's a vertical distance, it means you're not moving sideways, x is not changing, what is changing is just y. So as you can see here, let's say it's this point. We don't know what this point is, but we know this point will be some y. Let's call it y1. And this point is going to be some 2. Let's call it y2. And it's so obvious also that this is on the line. So this, we could say this is our y1, okay? And we could say this is our y2, which is the, um, the parabola. It doesn't mean it is correct, okay? But let's just say that's what it is. But 
obviously from the graph it's there. So assuming you didn't sketch any graph, you could take this as your y1, take this as your y2, it doesn't matter. But the vertical distance between the two functions is the difference between the two y's. So you can say, let the vertical distance, let the vertical distance v, okay, be such that v of x, okay, be v of x. So v as a function of x will be, I'm going to be subtracting, remember when you want to find the distance from here to here, it's just y1 minus y2, okay, it will be equal to y1 minus y2, which in this case we can say v of x is equal to, what is y1? Um, x plus 42, x plus 42, and what is y2? is this, so it's minus x squared. So you found a function that represents the distance between these two functions at any time. If you plug in any number here, it will tell you the distance between these two uh, points. For example, just if you want to test, if you plug in negative six into this function, you're gonna get zero because the distance between the two functions is zero. If you plug, yeah, I'm sure if you plug, oh yeah, it's true because they are the roots of the quadratic that we have here. So you're gonna get zero. If you plug in seven, you're gonna get zero because that's the distance. So the point we're really looking for is somewhere in between, and that will be a critical point. And remember what happens at a critical point. Yes, the derivative of the function is zero. So let's take the derivative of v of x. So v prime of x is gonna be the derivative of this function, which is gonna be one, and this goes to zero, and this is going to be minus 2x. So remember that the derivative is always equal to zero when you take this derivative. So that means 1 minus 2x equals zero, which implies x is 1 half. So we just need to be sure that this is a maximum point, not a minimum point, because this is a critical number. So the critical number we have, critical number equals um, 1 half. Okay, there are two ways to go about this to be sure that this is the, the point where the maximum distance ex uh, occurs. You just want to do a sign chart, okay? So two ways, it is either you take the critical number and the end point as method one, so because you have a boundary. If you have a boundary, you could use this. Let's call this method one, okay? So method one is you plug in the values. So you're going to say what is V of... What's the smallest number? Negative six. And then you also find the next one. What is V of one half? And you say, what is V of seven? You're trying to find the vertical distance at these different points. So this point is the point one half, just as we just calculated. And as you can see from the graph, it is the answer. But let's show it. Now, if we evaluate this, if you plug in negative six into this function, you're gonna get negative six plus 42 minus negative six squared. This is negative six plus 42, that's 36. 36 minus 36, it gives you zero, which shows that we're correct, okay? There's no distance. Uh, let's do this one. Let's do seven plus 42 minus seven squared, okay? Um, this is gonna be 49 minus 49, that gives you zero. So if we go here, we want to find the distance. It's going to be 1 half plus 42 minus 1 half squared. I can tell that this is 42.5, just to help myself, and this is 0 0.25, which is 1 fourth. So 42.5 minus 0 0.25 is going to be 41.25. Oh, what is that? Okay, <laughs> so this is one half minus one fourth is gonna be one fourth. So it's 42 one fourth. So it's gonna be 42 and one fourth, which will translate to, what is four times 42? It's 168 plus 169, 169 over four. So as you can see, this is the maximum distance, okay? The sign chart is just to help you confirm that you don't have to do these two um, you just need to be sure that this is a maximum point and you'll get it. And what the sign chart just does is that you tell yourself this is one half and I'm going to try out all numbers um, that are left of one half and see if 
my slope is going to be positive or negative. Remember, this is the equation of the slope. It's 1 minus 2x, okay? So if I pick any number that's less than 1 half, say negative 1, put negative 1 here, what would you have? You're going to have 1 minus, see, 1 minus 2x. If you put negative 1 here, or anything less, 0 even, if you put 0 here, this is going to be 1 minus 0, so no, 0 is not positive, <laughs> okay. Oh, 1 minus 0 is 1, positive, so it goes this way. And then if you pick any number greater than 1 half, so if, let's pick um, 1. If you put 1 here, 1 minus 2 will be negative 1. It's going to be a negative slope. So as you can see here, this graph goes like this and comes back down. So this definitely is a maximum. Okay? It's a maximum. So it's a local maximum and it's also the absolute maximum for this range or this interval that we have here. So we can say we know that the maximum occurs when x is one half and then you go plug in one half into the function and you're going to get this answer. Okay? But my recommendation every time you're given endpoints and you, you can find the critical numbers, just plug in the numbers and see which one gives you the biggest answer and that's your maximum. I hope this video was helpful. If it did help you, give it a like, share, and be subscribed if you're not. Most of my subscribers are not subscribed. Um, I don't know what you're doing or why, but you gotta tell me in the comment, in the comment section. Tell me why you're not subscribed if you're watching this video and you find it helpful. Just before I go, if you need any help with math tutoring or whatever you need to do, just get in touch with me. Send me an email, primenewtons at gmail.com. Um, I could do a Zoom with you if you're far away from Los Angeles. If you live in Los Angeles and you prefer one-on-one -on -one with me, I'll be available to help you too. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.